Hey everyone! So it's a beautiful day today and something exciting and interesting to come along with it. So I have some kind of, I guess, exciting news and also a, I believe, it's going to be a deep introspection, a look into my own life journey and psyche and also into things that matter. And what I'm specifically going to talk about is probably evident from the title, if the title is the same that I decided to keep. It's about rediscovering Aikido. And it's all related to something which happened lately. Uh, so lately I was recording a video uh, about the Aikido's philosophy and why I believe it often fails to deliver in most Aikido schools that I've witnessed or heard of. Uh, and so you can check out that video, but what, what is important about it was that at the end of that video, I, as I was talking about what is the Aikido philosophy or what it's supposed to be, uh, a part of me got quite inspired about it. And that was, I wouldn't, I didn't see that coming. I didn't plan for that to happen. And it was a significant moment for me because uh, lately, especially over the last few years, uh, I very much became an enthusiast of uh, critical thinking, of uh, always choosing the most effective path. And uh, that happens kind of both on the conscious and subconscious level. In other words, if I get excited about something, usually that's a sign that I see some practical value in it. And I was surprised myself. I, I caught myself off guard when I felt uh, inspired about the Aikido philosophy. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And so for the next few weeks, I started exploring that. Actually, let me just give me a moment. I want to check that. OK, the microphone is on. The worst thing you can do is record a video and not record the audio. So yeah, for the last, for the next few weeks, I was exploring that subject. I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll take that. I'll take a note that I got excited about it and I'll see if uh, that inspiration stays. That's actually one of the kind of tests I have or filters I have in my system because I am, generally I'm a very ambitious person. And in the past I used to suffer from uh, doing too much of kind of jumping on things which uh, I would get over, overloaded with. And one of the systems I kind of developed for myself was um, that when I get excited about something, I would take note of that and I would wait at least a few days to see if that excitement stays. Because in the past I would get excited about something and I would jump on it and I would do something about it. And later I would realize, actually, you know, that wasn't the best idea or I shouldn't have rushed in it, into it. Now, when you wait a few days or a few weeks, and if the excitement stays, usually for me, that's a sign that, okay, there's, there, that there's something there. My mind is attracted to it. Probably my subconscious notices that there's something that resonates with me there. And uh, that was the case with this subject, with the Aikido's philosophy. I also spent, while I was exploring that subject, there were also a few events that happened, kind of a few things, which strengthened that idea even more. And that's actually another system I used to implement in my life, and sometimes I still do, to make sure that I wouldn't do things in a rush, and that I would choose the right things. I call it the system of free pluses. It's not a great name, I guess, but <laughs> it works for me. And that is when I get excited about something and I feel like a potential that I'd want to do something. I usually wait for at least for three different events uh, un unrelated to each other that would support that decision. So for example, when I was planning to go, when I initially thought about doing the Wimp to Warrior, if you know my journey, hopefully, or basically I could say travel to the States to train in MMA full time. Uh, I wrote to Matt Thornton, head coach of that place where the, the program, one of the places where the program is run. And I asked him if that's a good idea and he said yes. My partner at the time as well supported that. 
uh, there was just kind of a thing, things were laying, laying out in a way where I was like, oh, okay, this is a good sign, this is a good sign. And I don't, I don't like the word signs. I think it sounds too mystical, but just kind of events which support that idea. And to come back to the main uh, story, main narrative, that happened with this thing so far. There are a few different events where the idea of uh, exploring the philosophy of Aikido, looking deeper into it and, and asking myself, you know, how could it be practical? It, it kind of drew me into it and, and also I got those events which showed me that there might be something there, not only for me, but also for others. So I will definitely talk to you more about that. And uh, before I get to the next step, I wanted to make sure to mention that uh, that doesn't mean I'm interested in reinventing the physical side of Aikido. At the moment, to say the least, I am not inspired about that. I did try to make Aikido quote unquote functional to make it a, into a martial art which works and delivers the philosophy through physical movement, you know, defending yourself without hurting others. Uh, my conclusion was that it's not worth it. There are other effective martial arts who are already out there. You know, why reinvent the bicycle? And if you do try to make Aikido functional, uh, my conclusion was that it will end up looking like other martial arts which are already functional. So just to say in a short way, that's not what I'm inspired about. The technical side, te Aikido techniques, I'm not that interested and hyped about it. But at the same time, the philosophy, I see that there could be some unique value there. And not only value, but something that potentially I could chip into significantly. This also relates to my personal journey. If you're following this channel, the journey, you probably know that it's so far, it's a lot about documenting my own exploration of what value I could give to people. And one of the discoveries that stuck with me through this exploration is the, is focusing on your strengths. It's focusing on things that you uniquely could deliver and that usually will rely on your strengths. And strength, that, that's a mix, in my opinion, of your own personal um, capacity, or I guess more would be your own personal qualities. You know, let's say if you're a patient person, or if you prefer, if you prefer writing over filming videos, if you prefer writing versus speaking, all of that. And the other part is your expertise, is where you spent, where you invested most of your time in receiving certain knowledge, because the more time you spend digging into the same place and into the same area, the more unique knowledge and experience you will find there and the more valuable it will be to others. That's one of the core philosophies I have that I apply all the time in my life. And without a doubt, I spend most of my life training and learning and practicing Aikido. There was yoga, there was meditation, but Aikido was definitely the, the, the clearest path that I spent most time in. And now not, not to come to an idea that, oh, that's why that's the reason why I, you know, I should, that's the sole reason why I should continue exploring the philosophy of Aikido just because I spend a lot of time and it's a downer to let go of it. Of course, it's kind of a downer. You know, it was crazy. It was, it's, it's almost weird and crazy that after more than a decade of constant practice and having Aikido as my main livelihood, I, I dropped it. I know that that's part of the reason why people appreciate my, my journey that I did that and I would be fine in continuing doing that as long as I don't see value in it. But this is, this is exactly what makes this point of my life interesting. 
it's because part of me is trying to recognize that there might be something there which first of all could be valuable in my life which I cannot stress enough how important that seems for me to be meaning that I one of the reasons why I don't like the whole self-help guru culture which is intending to criticize that on my on this channel uh, eventually is because it's usually very presumptuous self-centered it's it's a lot about taking things which sound good and sound like they work and just throwing it on others without really embodying it yourself that's the last thing i want to do and for me it's very important that it's been for years very important that whatever i teach or give to others that i make sure that it would be an integral part of my own practice and my own life and that if it if if the potentially applied practical side of the Aikido philosophy, if that, if that will not be practical in my life, if that will not show significant results, then there's no point in looking at it. First of all, it needs to be applied in my practice. Uh, now, uh, that's also, there's another thing that, that's important to stress, and that's the recognition that, I have some guests here, that the recognition that if it's only working for me, that's also not a way to go. I mean, if it's practical for me and it works for me, great. But if, if there would be a part of the journey to kind of share the wisdom, share the experience, the knowledge, the gathered knowledge from practicing it, I would want to make sure not to make the mistake of considering that, oh, if it works for me, that means it works for everyone. That's not a good way to go either. It has to be universally practical. But the first step, undoubtedly, for me is check how practical it is for you. How much can you apply to your life and how valuable and inseparable from your life it becomes. So it wouldn't be just about going and tutoring others but instead maybe potentially showing an example. So, uh, one more thing I wanted to introduce to you in this video, which I'm intending to make a part of the title, and I always like to say that, you know, the initial title might change as I pro produce the video. By the way, let's drink some coffee. So part of the video that I wanted to introduce to you is also considering the, the way the Aikido philosophy already impacted my life and how, what, what kind of a rough and crazy journey it went through. And I won't go on repeating the whole journey for you, but I wanted to look kind of at the psychological aspect of it, which I honestly, I don't think I spoke so much about, which I want to stress it here because that is the direct leading path to the next step of this. And that is, um, the recognition that uh, Aikido was such a big part of not only my life, but also of my identity. You know, I was living the Aikido philosophy. I used to wear my Aikido clothes way more than probably technically I should have. You might know that I used to walk around in the city sometimes with it, not to show off, but just because it was, <sighs> it felt practical for me. It, it was easier for me to walk with it than without it. And uh, I'm starting to get concerned I'll burn off bad by sitting here in the sun. We might move in a few minutes to a different place into the shade. Anyway, though, uh, coming back to the main point, the part, the Aikido was such a big part of my identity. I, was, I definitely looked like an Aikido guy. And if you followed my journey, you know that, you know, I looked like a very much traditional Aikido guy. And then I went on to how people expressed it in the comments, saying that I turned into looking like a typical MMA guy, you know, tattoo. <laughs> short hair etc but but now i just really feel comfortable this way i'm not trying to represent anything but 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 it shows again that how much aikido was part of my identity and when i left it when i separated especially in regards to me being part of the aikido community a lot of my friends were 
doing Aikido, my mentor back in the day was an Aikido guy. And the philosophy was based so much on the Aikido philosophy that when I started to see the dark side of it, it was really, really difficult not to throw it all away at the same time. And I acknowledged even on record that I do admit that most likely I threw the baby with the bathwater. You know, that uh, it was almost impossible for me not to drop away the good parts with the bad parts just to kind of rediscover myself because I think to a degree, and I spoke about that in, in some of the videos here on this channel, you know, there was also a bit of a cult vibe where I was involved in and and the identity was my identity was built around that and when I dropped it, the, that belief system was such a structural part of me that it was hard to see the good things in it. They were so tied up for me with the bad things, the negative things. Yeah, that when uh, I let, when I abandoned Aikido, it took me some time, it took me a few months. But eventually after about a half a year, I started to realize the separation, especially with my past mentor and the community that I was a part of, which actually we, pretty much didn't have any contact whatsoever anymore, which was crazy. You know, I, I, that showed me the dark side of it because pretty much nobody contacted me after I left that community. But when I left it, I started to realize that was actually a painful experience. You know, it was kind of like some people associated with the same as leaving a religion, which I guess would be a similar experience. But the troublesome part for me was Beforehand, I was relying a lot on the Aikido philosophy in my decision-making, in my value structure, and suddenly I threw it all away and I, I kind of felt naked. Which in a way was a good thing because um, I could rediscover myself. But it took me quite some time additionally to start looking back at what I learned through, those, through that decade and asking myself, so what's the good in it? And every time I would look at it, it was so difficult for me to see the good in it. It was so difficult to separate it from the bad. But eventually, slowly, bit by bit, I'm still on, on that process, I could say. I'm starting to look at it and say, oh, you know, you know if I separate this part from that part, actually, there might be something valuable there that wasn't all that bad. And it's kind of a fascinating process, and it's kind of the process that I'm in right now. Another part of that was also me these days looking back at how I was and how I became to be. And I honestly don't know how much I spoke about this on record, to be honest. I might have said it, but I'll make sure to say it here. Um, that In the past, I was much more idealistic, which came also with a lot of uh, being, a lot of naivete. Ah, oh, shade, finally. So yeah, it came with a lot of naivete. I, I really felt like I was, you know, and I, I, I recognized that I was a naive young guy, but also, you know, I went straight from high school into a full-on Aikido community. So not that, you can really, not that I can really blame myself for that. But I lacked a lot of experience, so, so I was very idealistic, but also not very mature in some aspects. In other, yes, in some, especially the worldly aspects, not really. I'll restart the camera because the timer is going out. With time, as I became disillusioned with the, a lot of promises, a lot of false promises of Aikido, my past mentors, it wasn't, I would got disillusioned not only by my last Aikido instructor, but also my first one. Um, I became disillusioned about the whole community that I was a part of, you know, I was like high up. 
I saw a lot of the dark sides of it that I did not recognize before. And then also I went on to this Perseid War with Aikido Online, which I think was my own hero's journey, if, if you allow me to say that. Where I, not only did I try to make sense of what happened to me and to make sure it wouldn't happen again, but also kind of including others in it, making sure that others wouldn't experience the same mistakes that I did. But that also came from a very negative point of view, not only for myself, but also there were, I got a lot of crap from a bunch of Aikido representatives. You know, I was critical and they were even more critical towards me and then I would, that would piss me off and I would hit them back and they would hit me back. And then eventually I came up to a point where I was like, holy crap, this is getting out of hand. Uh, but through that whole experience, I have to admit that not only did I become much less idealistic, but also I became much more cynical. I also became much more skeptical of ideologies, of practices, of people, which I think that's the one which I'm least happy about. And I can understand now with a certain sense of maturity, with, with more life experience, with more critical thinking, I can see, you know, why sometimes it's, I think it's justified to not trust people too much or to be a bit skeptical about masses of people. But that also took away a great power from me, which I think a part of me misses. That faith, that hope, that belief. I guess you could say that people can be better, that people are not hopeless, that you can make a difference. And the reason I'm saying this all to you, because it is deeply associated with the way I perceive the, I, what Aikido philosophy is. So I spoke about the Aikido philosophy in that video, you know, what is Aikido philosophy and why it fails. So you might check it out or you might, you know, you might have seen it already. So I'll try to make sure not to repeat myself. But uh, but I'll just say a few important points. And one of those points in what Aikido philosophy is, is the recognition that you're part of a greater whole. And I don't want to sound woo woo, but, but there's also, what's interesting is if you look at it rationally, to a great degree, it's true. That's what kind of makes it fascinating. I don't think if the focus is right in my camera. Shoot, I can't see. Oh no, I'm wasting your time. No, I guess. Anyway, so um, there is a practical sight to it. That even just rationally, if you look at it, especially these days, the fact that we're all connected is more evident than ever. You know, if the economy is hit in one place, it, the economy is hit in almost the whole of the rest of the world. We are also much more similar than we think. And I think that's actually one of the things which people need to become more conscious of. Something that I'm opposed to is the fact that we tend to present only the positive side of our life and that creates the illusion that everyone is doing great and I'm not, and I'm the only one who's suffering, which is not that like that at all but when you look back at the Aikido philosophy and you consider that notion of we are all part of a greater whole that starts to make a shift in your decision making process because if I realize that if I, if I consider more, because if I consider that we're all related, that we're all part of the same family, that makes one much more empathetic. 
and that makes you that makes one consider much more the the perspective of the other person. The easy way is to disassociate yourself from everyone to say, okay, you know, he's stupid and he's stupid. He's a nutcase. He's, he's hopeless. He's different. And not to consider what's the point of view of the other person, of how did he came to that point, to that conclusion, to that action, decision, thought of line. But when you consider that, it starts to create a certain bridge. It starts to create a bridge where you can meet because you're not separate anymore. If you're opposed, and I hope I'm not talking in too much of a highly fashion, like too, too high level advanced and you know, getting ahead of myself, but I hope this is understandable. I'll give you examples maybe. But thing is, if you, if you dissociate yourself from another person, think, okay, he's stupid, he's hopeless, he will never get it. There's no meeting point. You cannot, there's, it's pretty much impossible that you will ever, uh, that you will ever be able to get something across to that person. Meanwhile, if you ask yourself, okay, so how did that person get there? You know, what if I was in his place? What would I want myself to do to me if I was in his place? What would be the best thing? If you consider all of those points, suddenly there's a meeting point where you can realize where he's coming from and maybe you can find a middle point where you're like, actually, you know what? There's something there. And I'm talking from direct experience. It's funny because despite the fact that I abandoned Aikido completely, um, at the same time, uh, some of my some of the people that follow my journey noticed and pointed out in my YouTube comments that uh, I did apply the mentality of Aikido more than once. And that was actually very evident in some of the videos I made, but also in some of the comments. And you know, usually the comments is not a great place for seeking of truth. You know, we can get into endless debates where nothing good happens. And I've been down that road too. But there were some cases where I went in that, into, into that Aikido mindset and I asked myself, you know, where is this person coming from? What would be best for him to, to hear for his evolution? And when I did that, uh, I did get across to some people. I did reach a point where the person was like, holy crap, you know, I'm actually I'm starting to see where you're coming from. You know, we wouldn't maybe come to an agreement of a 100% where we would see both eye to eye, but we would develop a place of mutual respect where beforehand that person used to hate me. And actually one of the most, I've had numerous of those cases, but the most significant one, especially if you follow my journey, you'll know and you'll be interested in this one, is my relationship with Lenny Sly. If you don't know who's Lenny Sly, short version, very intense, uh, very uh, masculine, Aikido instructor, he's, he's, he has these strong opinions. And then he went on record and said that he hates my guts. He hated my guts like badly. And one time we met in the comment session of Facebook. I don't remember what it was, but we started writing back and forth. And I really was in that zone of Aikido mindset of, of not hating Lenny, not being opposed to him but really seeing where he's coming from, understanding him and, and, and trying to help him see my perspective, that we're actually not against each other, we're on the same page, we just have different approaches. I mean, it took a few hours of back and forth, but eventually we clicked. And then we called each other up, we spoke like for three hours nonstop, we called each other a few times again, we made some videos together, and he, he said numerous times, you know what, I consider you my friend and I, I'll always have your back. And, you know, I feel very dearly about Lenny as well. I love him. But it's interesting because we started off from a place where he used to hate my guts and he recognized himself that after that kind of Aikido approach, he started to appreciate 
where I'm coming from. We started to appreciate each other. So that was actually a very Aikido move, you know. Uh, but that's only one example, you know, I could keep on going and obviously I don't want to make this video, f you know, last forever. But I'll just give you a few more ideas about what that applied Aikido philosophy could be. So it's not only the mindset and how we relate to each other, which I do want to say is, would be crucial and so valuable to the current mindset of individuals. I think we're getting there, but and I'm not a politician, I'm not advanced in understanding the world events and I don't want to have an, a strong opinion about it but but you know it doesn't come far you don't need to go far to kind of perceive and see the chaos that sometimes we experience especially these days because of our sense of separation because of not relating to each other and people often choose very violent uh, responses and personally I don't think that leads to any practical value. You know, just going and bashing out windows and creating chaos, I don't think that's a solution at all. Again, I could see where those people are coming from, but it's not a mature response. And in such a in such a case, in such an environment to add that Aikido mindset, Aikido philosophy, it could work wonders. Now, the, one of the reasons I'm interested to revisit the subject and to explore it is because in the past I was, you know, I was all fluffy and positive and I lacked a sense of that darkness to, to be able to relate to it more and to recognize the, the shortcomings, which is crucial in any exploration. And now I'm more in that dark mindset of being cynical and <laughs> realistic. So, as some would say. But what if we would find the middle there? What if we, if we would find the union, union between these two things? I, I, as I kind of pointed towards that idea, I, I do miss that, I, that idealism that I used to have, that faith, that belief in people and the, and the nature and the positive nature of human beings and the capacity of human beings to develop, evolve, become better, to rediscover themselves. I'd love to be a part of that evolution of individuals, not, not forcefully, but in a very pragmatic and practical way. And so it might be a long journey and it might be something which will require a lot of energy, but it might, it just might be worthwhile. And one more part about the Aikido philosophy, which attracts me, it's not only that, that union, that kind of interrelatedness perspective, but also the founder of Aikido used to speak a lot about our mission. that we, he would, uh, one of my favorite quotes used to be, he would say that we all, that each individual has his mission, each family has his mission, and each country has its mission, like a collective. And that it's our responsibility to fulfill that mission. Now, it is somewhat of a, a bit of a mystical statement, and it's, it's complicated to directly point out what does that mean, where does this mission come from, and, and there's so many questions that pop up. But I used to really hold dearly that, that idea and I used to feel like I have a mission and that used to drive me dramatically. I still do feel a sense of a mission, but, but also being so pragmatic, being having that questioning mind, that critical mind, it's much more difficult to tap into that mentality. Because as I said, all those questions come up. So where does that mission come from? Who gives you that mission? Is one person's mission more important than another? It's just so many questions. But the thing is, I also feel, and it's actually from a video that Linda uh, Heffernan sent, sent to me, who I had a talk with about cult mentality, about Jung, Carl Jung, where he points out that 
he suspected that one of the reasons why a lot of people feel so alone and so confused and so down is because yes we did lose religion most of us did you know, let go of religion of faith and I think it's a good thing to a degree you know I'm not religious either but he was pointing out that the way I perceive it the way I understand and I and I like to agree with that idea that we do need to believe in something that it's inherent in human beings to, to require a certain belief system and I'm not necessarily saying a religion but something to believe in and when I dropped Aikido I dropped away a whole belief system and thank goodness you know it helped me rediscover myself and, and, re and discover some great answers but some a part of me also feels like I'm I miss part of me misses something that I would strongly believe in that I would allow myself to believe in and hopefully that obviously would be a practical pragmatic effective belief but I almost feel like a part of me needs something to believe in and that notion of what the Aikido's founder suggested that that mission-based belief I think it would, we, we would have to be very cautious in how we would approach it to make sure it wouldn't become a belief which, which would make us blind or irrational. But to have, but to believe in something which gives you a sense of a greater purpose. And again, it's just such, it's such a fine line. I so much want to make sure it doesn't become a religion or a cult or something like that. But with all best do in, intention do, I feel that sense of us having a purpose would also, a good purpose, a, a constructive purpose, would be very valuable to a lot of individuals, to a lot of people, to our society, to our, yeah, to our, to human beings, to the collective and individuals. So part of me is interested to look at that aspect of the Aikido philosophy as well in the best way possible. And there was the very last thing on my mind that I wanted to share and it slipped me. It slipped my mind. <laughs> Usually that means I need to drink some coffee. Shit, it was something smart and important. Let me see. I'll, I'll make a short. I'll take a short break. I'll turn off the camera because I need to restart it, and I'll see if I can come back on it. All right, I got it. I remembered. I, I, I thought I almost lost it, but I remembered. And this is a big one, an important one. But I'll do my best not to make it forever. And then, you know, hopefully, I will still live for a while, and I'll have chances to record more videos about the subject and de de deepen this uh, exploration and make it more effective. But the 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 point that I wanted to come across was. Something that I was considering a lot about was when I dropped Aikido, I feel I became destructive. I used destruction, <laughs> man, I really don't want to sound boo-boo, but I, I, I feel like these words help me express myself. So let's see, for the sake of it, let's continue. So. So I feel like I, I became destructive, you know, I, I bashed the keto to pieces, I des destroyed it and broke it down into parts to see what works, what doesn't work, primarily what doesn't work. And I was in that kind of negative state, which is powerful. And also too, you know, I learned MMA, which is also way very destructive, you know. I love MMA, there, there's so much good about it, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu too, but, but there's also that destructive nature there, you're punching each other, you're kicking each other, it's a, it's, part of it is about destroying the other person. And it gave me a lot of power, but lately I've started to feel like I'm starting to miss that constructive aspect in my life. You know, I delivered, I do consider that I delivered significant value through that destructive process, through breaking down disillusioning people, showing the negative sides of things, but also I'm starting to miss a sense of creating something. 
and not you know inventing a new bicycle but just delivering something which would be more tangible which would be more passable more more useful more usable directly i don't know maybe i'm you know still too vague and and you know this is a very early stage of this and the reason i made this recording is to capture this live exploration uh, things will become more clear but i want to make this into a historic moment into a journey and lesson of all of us together but it's yeah it's still an early stage and it'll take time to define things to to name them to find the pros cons and most effective ways but But yeah, um, part of me wants to start to look more at something which is more direct, directly giving, more tangible. And Aikido philosophy, a lifestyle based on the Aikido philosophy in the best possible way, in the most efficient, pragmatic way, might be part of that answer. So we'll see. So let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Are you getting excited? Is this interesting to you? I do advise, don't rush to judgment. As I said, this is very early stages, you know, and it's still hard to specifically, you know, use the, the right vocabulary for this. I want to make sure that to bring this across that I'm not looking into the woo-woo stuff of it. I really want this to be practical, pragmatic, but I do feel there's some potential and I'm eager to explore it and to look at what it could be on my life and the life of others. We'll see where this goes. This will not be the only direction that I'm taking on. This will just be one of my products, projects. I'm eager to explore various other subjects too and I will continue doing that, but, but this most likely turn into a one of my directions. So let me know what you think about that. And the very last thing, probably the haters already left. The haters never watch the full video and they comment early. But I just want to point out, to, for the sake of it, that, uh, you know, I, I'm not looking forward for the people who would be like, oh, we knew you will come back to Aikido. Oh, now you understand that Aikido was always the best. No. I don't think Aikido was the best. I think there's some good things to Aikido, but there's a lot of crap. I'm still opposed to it. This doesn't mean that I'm all lovey and fluffy now. That doesn't mean that I don't recognize the shorts, short hands of it, short sides. And that I'm, I'm saying that I was wrong. What I am saying is that there might be something there which might be worthwhile bringing up and making more practical. Not physically, but mentally. So we'll see where this goes. Thank you for watching as always. And keep questioning.